Hello, everyone. Tim here. We'll be starting very shortly, just allowing a few more people to join on live. Let's just see who we've got live. Uh, so we've got Sandra, John, Robert, Sheila, Linda, David, Gwen, Larry, Francois, Ravi, Ravi, Kada, Diane, Lynn. Uh, we've got Joseph, Hans Peter, Laurie, Danielle, Sue, and Mike. Hello to all of you listening live or watching live. Right, we'll just wait another minute or so and just wait for any stragglers to come on. Okay, I think we'll make a start. So welcome to my live demo and our Patreon project for October. So it's a live demo for my Patreon members only. It's being recorded after the presentation, after the demo. You will hopefully get an email from the Crowdcast system with a link to the recording. It will be the same URL, the same link. This Crowdcast system for Patreon uses the same location for everything, your registration, viewing live and watching the recording as many times as you want to. After I close the event, after I close the demo, just allow a little bit of time for the system to process recording before you play it back. And also the resolution might get better on the recording if you just wait a little bit. For those of you on the relevant Patreon membership level or tier, you send me a photo of your painting and I'll give you an individual critique. Many of you listening live will be familiar with the process and I will be in writing or, or as a video back to you giving a critique. So for this live session, you can paint along with me if you want to or just watch as I do the painting and you can paint in your own time afterwards. Remember the community tab also on Patreon to share your painting with other Patreon members, as well as if you're on the relevant critique, mailing me with a photo of your painting. There'll be more instructions in the posting. For those listening live, I'll, I'll make a separate posting with the full instructions on how to submit your painting uh, submit your painting if you're fairly new to, to the process. Now, the audio part of this demo is one way only. Your microphone is on mute. If you've got a question, please click on the ask a question button, which might be, depending on what device you're watching on, might be down the bottom somewhere. Uh, and I'll do my best at various stages when I, when I stop. I'll... Uh, do my best to answer your questions. I'll just I'll just give out your first name, by the way. Don't worry about um, uh, me divulging your full name, but just just your first name for that question, and I'll answer as best I can. So, ideally, please any questions, put that into the ask uh, ask a question button, not on the chat. I know you can. I I can see everyone's found chat, and you're all introducing yourselves. Thanks very much for that. Right, the subject for October, continuing our round the world virtual voyage. Uh, last last time we were in Uganda, now we're in Morocco, and this is the Medina of Fez in Morocco. So, uh, a nice exotic looking streets here, market couple of towers, simple perspective, a few figures, 
we've got a tree we've got a simple tree in there as well nice shadows coming across the street quite a simple street scene probably the 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 main challenges here for us will be getting that perspective right all right the perspective of the top of the shops there street level on this side probably a little bit steeper something like that and then the bottom of the street the values the trying to push that these two towers trying to push that distant tower a little bit further back this one appearing nearer and figures if you're not used to figures we've got loads of figures here now, now for this you could you could copy these figures if you want to i'm going to try and make mine up from my own imagination i just find that person i just find that easier and as i do the drawing i'll, I'll be covering the, the composition and trying to get the 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 balance right of these figures in the scene so that's the subject the the actual source photo I, I'll, I'll keep showing this as i go through quite frequently uh, just as a a quick reminder and, and refreshing us what I'm what I'm trying to do and what my my thought process is my my own particular take on this the the source photo those watching on Crowdcast Patreon you've got the green source photo button at the bottom of your screen click on that and you should be able to see the image and it hopefully will go up in a new window for you not um on this on this live viewing so there's there's the source photo for you and it was in the invite and it was on the posting in on on patreon on the patreon platform as well for you but just give me a shout if you don't have the the source photo easy to hand when you when you do it let me go through the materials i'm going to be using paper saunders waterford cold press 300 grams my normal palette of colors neutral tint burnt umber burnt sienna yellow ochre probably be using quite a bit of that there's there's, there's quite a bit of yellow ochre i see around the scene as well as this this blue i reckon that's a a lovely cobalt blue there these these um screens or um dividers between the shops there yellow ochre vir viridian green this is cobalt green cerulean blue cobalt blue ultramarine blue alloys and crimson cadmium red light red cadmium orange lemon yellow there's a little bit of lavender down there three mixing wells i'm going to be using a, a 3b pencil for lightly putting in my my outline sketch um, very shortly brush wise i will i'll be describing the brush as I, i'll be describing the paints as i go through my my particular uh mixture brushes i most likely be using for this demo is first of all a medium size synthetic mop brush all right that one there this is from Raphael soft aqua then a sort of medium um squirrel mop brush actually not that one I picked up the wrong one there there we go almost identical this is a newer one it's got a better point to it so as you as you were a uh, little bit of all, the, all these brushes hopefully we get a, a good point on them and a good edge so this is a pure squirrel mop brush and then a medium stroke large synthetic round brush again with a, a good point to it and a good edge and a smaller version of that there and maybe a rigger that's sort of very you'll be familiar with those of you who've watched my previous demos or a keen watercolorist a rigger brush for doing fine lines and 
there are a few little power lines here. You can just about see them in the source photo. Might get a few of those in. Quite a nice yeah. element to introduce to a street scene, particularly where we've got a left-hand side and a right-hand side connecting those, those two halves together. Right. So I would just check and see if there's any questions before I make a start. I've just got a... I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment. So if if my throat gives up, I've got my lozenges to hand. Hopefully um, I won't need those and my voice will keep going. Right. I don't think there's any questions. Right. Let's make a start on the drawing then, which I find is the most difficult thing to, to do, to try and establish. I'm trying to picture... I'm trying to picture that scene now on my paper. And I'd like to try and get a little bit more of the foreground in the picture. I'm not going to include this guy here. You could copy this guy if you want to. He's quite good because there's a nice bit of light hitting his shoulder and his left arm against a darker background. But in my mind, I just get, get uneasy about the figure not being totally in the picture. He's sort of, his legs have been cut off at the bottom there. So I might exclude that figure. Likewise, if you are copying figures, mm -hmm. this child figure looks like he's got his forearm against his head and he's walking, walking that way. Quite difficult, I think, to, to try and capture that movement of that figure. But the others are quite easy. They're either, well, a lot of them are going going away from us. Some might be coming towards us. There's some traditional Moroccan attire uh, here. This lady with a long robe and the the um, quite these these quite large hoods they have as well. Um, so traditional stuff and more more um, more uh, contemporary um, Western style dress there. So a few figures to think about. Yes, so drawing first and the most difficult thing to really get right because I believe that if, if the drawing isn't right, then painting follows. It's quite difficult to rectify any drawing or, or um, composition errors in that in that uh, in that uh, in that whole painting process i'm going to start in the top left corner where there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a a shop blind or top coming out and there's a bit of a gap and we're going a little bit further down the street thinking about the angle of all of these shops the, the the angle of the top of the shops and these various coverings that we've got going down the street now i have drawn that fairly loosely first of all deliberately i, th I think if i go into too much detail i might get bogged down with with being a little bit too tight so i just want to try and keep just the general gradient of that slope there I'll, i might strengthen some of these lines surely just so that you can see them on the on the display on the demo now these two towers let's try and get these right i don't want one right in the middle if i can help it we've got these two towers one nearer one a little bit further away this one's quite cool this one's quite warm obviously bigger smaller and looking at the I, I guess they're probably about the same height and looking at that angle all right quite straightforward lines there horizontal lines facing us straightforward from that point of view so let's have one about about there maybe See, you can move these around to suit 
suit the composition. So there's my first tower. And with the sides, trying to make them vertical, I'm glancing over the left-hand side where I've got the side of my paper and trying to imagine that being being parallel, those two lines there, just as, a, as, a, as an aid to me. And then the other tower further away, I'm going to draw this a little bit lighter because I don't want too many pencil lines to show with this lighter tower. It looks a little bit narrower than the first tower, further away. There we are, something like that. Not too much detail. We've got the embellishments on the, the top of the tower. Let's get this one in right. And the far tower, there's a little bit of darker, a darker value at the top of that tower. Now, tree, this lovely tree, great tree because it's providing a bit of contrast, dark tree at the base of the canopy of that tree against these blinds now coming at that sort of angle. The sun is coming in like this, I guess, or maybe a little bit more overhead. Or actually, we can, we can see with the with the length of the shadows going across the street. It's that sort of angle. So they these shopkeepers, they've got their blinds perfectly placed just to protect their 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 products and the and the clients uh, coming into the shop. I'm trying to get that sort of angle on the right hand side. So loosely that tree. I will of course go in a bit darker if you can't see that. The tree, the, the, the trunk of the tree is leaning slightly into the composition. So it's it's actually doing us a favor there, rather than, it would look a bit odd if it was pointing that way. I think that tree trunk being on that side of the picture is gonna look better angling just a little bit that way. Now, over on this side, we've got these blinds. We've got the shops on the right. They're going up a, another level beyond the, the ground level. So I've got that in there and we've got the first blind in, maybe have another one. Slightly different angle like that back to the left hand side strengthen some of these lines now that i think they're sort of about right really we've got lots of sort of abstract shapes at the tops of the shops, all these different blinds and coverings. I'm really just going to keep it quite loose there. We have a few vertical bits of the blinds coming down. And there are a few strong vertical lines as well. There's some clothing over here, some dresses hanging out, verticals, 
dividing these shops, doorways that are closed, maybe a little bit more clothes hanging out there. As we go further into the distance, it all becomes quite light and faint. We, we really can't see exactly what's going on. So that's, I think I'm quite happy with that. Now, figures. I don't want a figure in the middle. I don't want a figure partially on the scene, but I do want a few figures to try and balance out, balance out what's going on here. So I will, well, let me first of all talk about the tops of these figures. They're about there. We're, we're, I think we're all sort of on the level. So all of these figures will roughly, the tops of their heads will roughly be in line. Try and avoid the feeling that we're looking down on the scene so that distant figures are higher in your composition the nearer figures, all right? They're all, the, the tops of the heads are all in, in line and different sizes of figures. That's going to give the impression of the, the depth and how, how close these figures are to us. Let's get one in first, then use that as a measuring element for the rest of the figures. So perhaps if we have one over here i'm also going to try and avoid putting a figure in front of a strong vertical element like that tree trunk i don't want a figure there i want to keep that tree trunk in all right that's the tree trunk there's the shadow going across the ground i don't want a figure here maybe to the right maybe to the left would be okay First figure, then looking at the heights of these figures. I'll pop one in here. Let's have this one in traditional Moroccan attire. Like that, maybe it's a sort of stripy robe there we are head this guy is walking into the street right using that as a guide let's put in another figure over here maybe this one's walking towards us there another figure there uh let's have a Maybe a, um, a, a figure in size halfway between these two over on this right hand side. Perhaps a light, that's a lighter figure against a darker background. It's quite dark in there. A few more over a few more over here so that's the that's the middle where's the middle that's about the middle let's get a few more either side of that middle line Thinking about market scene, we want people carrying bags as well. And have a couple in there. Actually, I'll have three in there. I think it's all right. So just just to do a recap here just a few figures 
to add context to the scene, a bit more interest, drawing the, 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 the viewer's eye into the scene. I'm not covering this space here because I can now use that for some lovely, interesting shadows coming across the street being created by these shops on the left hand side so they're not being obliterated by figures be a, be a shadow there for that figure i think i'm about there actually i, I just had in my line for the left hand side we've got all sorts of strange angles of lines happening here we've got a bit of a dome on the top of that tower can't really see what's going on in that one tree oh there is looks like there's a street light there can you see that coming out at an angle you might want to include that i don't think i'm gonna bother i might put in some power lines later on i'm not going to draw them in but there are these power um the, these posts here that are securing some cables or telephone lines i'm not sure what these horizontal ones are doing maybe they're just supports for uh point of sale material or, or something like that i don't know anyway there's there's some interesting horizontal lines that we we might include as well so make sure the drawing's right before cracking on with the the painting okay well that's me done on my drawing before i start painting are there any oh there's one question let me just check that so andrew andrew is this your first attempt at this or did you have a practical andrew this is my very first attempt at this but it's going to be it's, it's similar to lots of many other street scenes where you've got the the left hand side you've got the right hand side you've got perspective but to answer your question this is the first time i've i've genuinely done this scene never done a moroccan uh, uh a sort of market scene like this so <laughs> we're in it together if it's the first time for you as well right i don't think there's any questions them all right uh laurie you can hear me can you linda you can hear me pop something in chat thanks laurie all right just want to check that before i before i continue with the painting good so let's get some paint on the paper now just review the scene as you know the way i normally paint is that the first painting stage i cover most of the paper except those that i want to preserve or keep very light or i want to handle in a particular way now the sky here is very light you could do this sky with a very light blue wash. I'm going to go for a yellow ochre, a very light yellow ochre wash. Come down, obliterate the whole scene with yellow ochre. Maybe start light, come a little bit darker, ever so slightly in the sky. It's almost one value, very light. Down to the middle portion, maybe preserve some of the whites of the paper here for some of these the these horizontal elements where where the light's catching them okay over there maybe keep some of these blinds over there a little bit light and some of the figures as well in the in the street come a little bit possibly a little bit darker cooler for the street but 
it's I, I'm just going to keep it fairly fairly plain plain. I'm going to the, the the main objective is covering covering most of the paper. And for this, I'm going to be using my a medium sized mop brush, fairly big mop brush, as big really as you can as you can go. And so that's just my water container is over here. If you see me go here, that's there's my water container. Don't know whether you can hear the water and just pick up my, my fully loaded brushes full of clear water on that and just just touch lightly that yellow ochre to introduce some to the paper so let's just cover all of this sky area it will dry a little bit lighter won't it with watercolor come down if you find the sky is just a little bit too dark as i'm feeling i'm just picking up some more clear water and just paint that across the top and lift off but keep it fairly fairly darker for me across the across the horizon now as we come a little bit further down i'll just continue this yellow ochre theme even over the tree the shop blinds are sure just this is where it's great to have a good a good edge on your brush so you can carefully paint around those blinds let's keep that figure light let's keep that figure there light as well and maybe one or two of these light because they're they're catching a bit of the sun these i can paint over these they might go a little bit darker so just continue over keep the tops of the figures unpainted the heads and the the lower part of the bodies we can uh, we can paint over right down to street level let's go a little bit cooler add in a little bit of cobalt blue something like that to cool things down a bit but going a bit darker than the sky just a little bit darker if it's too cool warm it up a bit and notice my brush strokes the 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 sky i was doing those horizontal lines trying to keep it nice and flat whereas the the street i want to get a bit of character into that street so i'm almost stabbing the the paper with my brush perhaps just adding a few little a few little horizontal marks like that but trying to give it a bit of texture to that road surface and that 
is, let's just mop up this bead that's forming at the bottom. I've got a slight gradient on my on my board. That for me is it. The temptation is to maybe start playing around with it, but honestly, just leave it. If you think there's any mistakes, don't don't bother trying to rectify them because you you just got to let things settle down and dry down and then and then make the decision whether you need to glaze over it, go darker, or lift off certain areas. Um, just let it do its own thing. Right, I'm going to let this dry a little bit now. And if you've got any questions, those listening live, I'll. Uh, Oh, Linda, you had to restart your, your computer. Oh, okay, you restart your computer. Okay. And you can hear me now. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm going to dry, speed up the drying process with my hairdryer. Excuse the noise, please. I want to make sure everything now is totally dry before I go in and add in the darks. The next stage for me will be looking at the distance and getting in these distant the distant tower the nearby tower gradually working my way towards us then the left hand side of the street shadows going across the street drop in the figures tree and then the right hand side that's my process i'm imagining anyway i'm just going to use the hair dryer now to speed up the drying process so Excuse the noise, everyone. Okay, I think that's drying out all right. Just I, I just keep tapping the paper lightly just to make sure it, it's dry enough. So next step, distant tower, perhaps a little bit of the, the buildings in the distance there in a similar value, and then coming closer towards us, swapping brush now to a soft brush. I use the soft brush because I... I I feel like if, if I use the same synthetic brush, I might damage the wash below and and watercolor is it it can be quite delicate, can't it? And depending on the surface you've got, you don't want to um damage or or affect the the first wash you've done. So soft brush for me is my preference. Now distant tower. <clears throat> I feel between the two, I don't know whether you feel likewise, this one's a bit cooler, a little bit bluer than this one. That appears to me like a pale yellow with little bits of white detail in some of the, the, the sides of that tab, but that was a bit cooler, perhaps a tiny bit of light red um, on that top band here, possibly. But keep it simple. So soft brush with a good edge and a good point to it. 
let me just, because I haven't used this brush for a day or two, it's gone a little bit stiff. I just need to soften it with some water. There we go. Okay, and just pick up a tiny bit of, well, what will it be? A bit of cerulean blue maybe. I mix my cools generally here, warm, warmer colors there, and then darks up here. So darks, cools, warms generally. I might, sometimes I do change tack, but uh, let's just now check my brush. Not too much water, but enough to go over the whole of this tower. I just think that's the right that's the right kind of value for that. Perhaps a tiny bit of red for the top. And then go lighter for the rest of the tower. Some of the tree will come over to that tower. Below the tower, coming down towards the street level, some of this will be covered with the tree, but just in case it doesn't, I've continued that lighter color down to there, right. Next, nearest tower, which is a little bit yellower, a pale yellow. Let's get this was used for some for some uh, green for some foliage in a, a previous painting. Let me just see if we can perhaps it's a little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre. Mix it up in my warmer area and now just test yes i think that's all right it will dry a little bit lighter I think the right hand side might be a tiny bit darker because it's on the opposite side to the sun. There. Just to get the top dome in, the top dome, and I'll just go to a round brush and pick up something cool here. It's gonna be like a grayish color, I think, darker than the, darker than the rest of the tower. And I need to be careful not to smudge that area there. So just get in. bit of that dome. 
like that and the top part of the tower is still quite damp it's giving me a bit of softness to that I'll draw in that line there when this is drier okay that's that tower done if you find it's a little bit too dark I can just lift it out with my my fingertips now over to the shops and this left hand side a lot darker now a lot darker a lot thicker when, when I talk about the ratio of the of the paint to water water a little bit thicker here stronger than than what we're doing before starting from the top left hand corner I'll, I'll work my way generally down this sort of way all right so what color well let's just review the paint that there's lots of cools and warms in here a bit of a stripey thing going on a bit of red trim stripes these blues yellows a warm brown different colors not too bright colors for some of the clothing but there's pinks there's like a fluorescent green there there's an orange of, of this kid um all sorts of colors going on but i want to try and keep it loose don't be too 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 tight so i'll i'll just go in with some base darker coloring and then maybe splash in some color later on starting from the top left corner well let's go in with a ultra in blue my classic sort of darker mix ultra in blue burnt sienna bit of aloes and crimson bit of ultra in blue again perhaps a bit of neutral tint to make it darker and just just go for it using the same medium medium mop brush so there's a little bit of a trim here and then alternating the colors as i come down altering blue aloes and crimson not too much paint on the brush that's just a little bit too much there Some of these clothes, I'll, I'll, some of these clothes that are hanging up in the shops, I'm just going to paint around those. And then continue on with a little bit of burnt sienna. Just to keep things interesting going back into that color and into the uh, the, the shadow area there and introduce some blues let's just continue over with these little bits of shadow underneath these blinds here 
try and get in those shapes. Just think about shapes. Don't get too fixated by what's causing it. Just think about the shape and the, the angle of them. Maybe make things a little bit darker with some neutral tint. Keep going over. Now make it a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter as I continue down. And as I go further into these these shots going into the distance. I'll just make it a little bit lighter, adding more water to my mix, maybe a little bit cooler as well um, with the color. There we are. Now just coming back to us again. Maybe paint around. Looks like there's another figure has <laughs> magically appeared there. Sometimes these things happen. You leave little patches of the paper unpainted and figures appear to you. Right, we're coming down to street level now. Cooler, I think. Bit of cobalt blue. And quite a lot of cobalt blue. So see this smooth transition from the from the shops to the road from that horizontal to that vertical. I think that's gonna work better. Now, as I come out, let's have these horizontals coming across and a jagged line, thinking about these, these different levels of rooftops creating those shadows. Like that. There's the sort of lemon yellow vertical bands going across in these different clothes while this is still damp let's use my my medium round brush now just to drop in a little bit of color into this so picking up fairly thick paint here, not too much water. This pink dress, oops, too dark. This pink dress in the top here, there we go. And maybe a slightly sort of greener Pick up my 
Fred in green. Um, perhaps some reds as well in here. Pick up this cadmium red. Just drop in bits of color here and there. Right, this guy. Let's color in these figures now. This guy, let's make him a browner robe. Burnt Sienna. And then merge that in with the ground. This guy here. Blue atop. Few figures just touch them right. We'll strengthen some of these up with the smaller brush shortly. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's all right. I'll come back to those figures later on. Uh, maybe this one I'll just drop in a little bit of color for the legs, just dropping. I'm connecting these figures to the shadow. All right, so that's why I did the shadow first and then the figures second. All right, let's do the tree now, which is quite a, a spherical tree, quite easy to do, but we, we don't want to make it too perfect. We want to rough it up a little bit. We could, we've got little, little bits of the foliage uh, catching the light. And then some darkness on the right bottom right hand side. Nice contrast against the shop lines on the right hand side of the street. I'll swap to a smaller medium brush for this. It's medium round brush, synthetic for this. Uh, right. Green. Um, well, you could, I sometimes mix any yellow with any blue almost a 50-50 ratio, um, adding that in. Or you could, a nice dark green is, is Viridian green and a burnt umber, I find, is quite a nice one. Make it a little bit lighter with more Viridian green than burnt umber and not too much not too much water on the brush now notice the the these branches are radiating out from the center so we've we've got uh, this pattern of branches around the side and a few little few little leaves on the on the outside of the on the outside of the canopy. So I'm just really replicating that with my brush marks. Burnt umber, Viridian green. And then as I come down, as I come down to the ground, I'm going to go a bit darker here, try and get a hard edge up against the shop blind to create a nice angle there. So I've just picked up a bit of 
ultra in blue. for the darker part of the tree. And then the tree trunk itself, let's go a, a lot darker with some neutral tint. down the trunk and then a little bit of shadow across the street. Now, right hand side, let me just see if there's a question. Oh, there is a question, hang on a second. So Mike, have you, Mike, Mike is asking, have you studied Japanese calligraphy? Your stroke suggests this. I just find that certain brushes, they they just invite you to that sort of lightly touching, almost stabbing the, the paper in different directions and then lifting off and then moving to a different area. And you're just repeating that 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 process. You're getting a kind of a, a rhythm. Uh, no, I haven't to answer your question, Mike. Um, but certain brushes, they just, just invite that. I mean, if I went with a different brush, um, well, stupid example, a saw brush. I couldn't really do that. Or, or a big mop brush. A big mop brush. I couldn't do that sort of, those, those sort of brush marks. You could also drop in some clear water into this tree while it's still damp, just to introduce a bit more of a texture to these to the interior of the tree see that see what that does right over to this right hand side now um thanks mike for that don't think there's any more questions right um right hand side medium synthetic round brush getting in these these shadows here, creating the, the form of those blinds, perhaps hinting at some more clothes hanging up inside then the interior, um, getting these, these the angles right for the perspective as well. And color-wise, well, it's, it's a dark brown, neutral tint, burnt umber will do for me. not too much water on the brush i can still get a little bit of an edge a point to it and then just paint around these blinds So just dabbing in some water to go a bit lighter. And then as I'm coming down, I want to paint around this figure. paint around the figure we've got a little bit of light coming across the street beyond the tree trunk and that shard of light is coming into these shops
and a fairly sort of random fairly random brush marks just to give a hint at something going on there with those bits of produce down there in the in the bottom of the store okay now it's a case of putting things together with these figures getting more detail with these shops trying to we're generally using a smaller brush now just pulling in things together these um, horizontal things and cables and maybe a little bit more detail to the tower just to pull it together but we're we're sort of all right so far um with this tree i can just use a paper tissue to lift out some of the bits of that tree i think it just needs a few little bits of foliage on the on the exterior of that tree next smaller brush smaller synthetic round brush and almost following my 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 previous um my previous process distant tower near tower and then the shops because this is this should be bone dry now very light oh it's too dark a bit more water just pick up anything in this palette here and then oh, almost what what mike said these sort of bits of these chinese brush marks here There is a sort of crisscross lattice type um, pattern going on with this far tower. If I if I put in all of these these this, this sort of lattice crisscross mark, that would bring that further forward. So I'm I'm gonna not bother with that. Too much detail. But instead, as I'm coming down. just with this brush, applying more pressure here and there. Give, give the appearance of, give the effect of something going on in the distance, just um, at the end of the street there. Okay. Bit darker now, as I come to the nearer tower. like that and there's something here add a few stripes for that one and a few more stripes there Pick up some dark, not too much water. So these horizontals coming out at, I don't, honestly don't know what they are, but they're quite interesting. Just coming out at various angles. So 
some detail to the clothes that are hanging up. A bit more shadow underneath. Ultra in blue, neutral tint. Perhaps a bit more water, neutral tint. Ultra in blue. And I'm, ju I'm just constantly looking at the photograph just to give me a bit more inspiration. Not too much detail in here. I want it to be just fairly simple going in with some darker areas. There's these lovely bits of cobalt blue in there. Let me just see if I can just wash my brush off. There's still some dark paint on there. Wash my brush off and cobalt blue, neat cobalt blue. Let's see if I can just create some of these blues. That's enough. Let's do this figure now. Uh, this figure had a brownish robe. Darker, darker head. Perhaps some stripes on that robe. Tiny bit of definition to the street level, not too much. I don't want to make it too harsh or too stronger transition from the from the shops to the to the street. Just enough. This guy's got a couple of bags. Um, there was that figure there. And then let's add in some color to some of these distant figures there. Now this one, this figure. Pick up some light cerulean blue. And some feet coming at the bottom of the robe. bag for that figure. And some random marks at the end of the street to just explain that there's, there's something going on there.
bit more on the right hand side. Give this figure a darker, darker head. There we go. Bit of rubbish on the ground, chips, stones, something like that. few lines just to help the the guidance help the viewer go into the scene um, that was my figure that appeared uh, let's just see if there's anything else I can Add in here, that's the figure hood. Okay, what I'll do now with a couple of questions, let me just um, answer those. Hang on a second, please. So a question from Anna, not related to this painting project, but do you have any suggestions for a limited palette for use for urban plein air work? I'm in the UK early autumn, or maybe some autumnal colours. I would say, so I would go with four colours, a neutral tint, a yellow ochre, any blue, and any red to stick with those four but get used to mixing those those colors together um if you were to stick with um four three or four colors there anna uh, that would be ideal it is that's pretty similar to what i would use as well maybe for autumnal use if you could sneak in another one maybe a light red possibly for those autumn leaves uh, that answers your question thanks anna and melissa do shadows have hard edges very good question well if it's strong sunlight and the shadow is near the object that's causing the shadow then there would be a hard edge these here are half and half that there, there are you see we've got to we've got to think about the um, joseph's photo and how how focused it was maybe some of these edges here are a little bit softer so i i did go a little bit softer there melissa maybe a bit too hard here possibly so a bit of a mixture but think about the the atmospheric conditions the time of day how strong the light is the surface that the shadows on there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of um variables there Okay, blinds on these on the right hand side. I think they're just a little bit too white. So if I add in a bit of burnt sienna to them. There we are. Some power lines. I'm going to use my rigger brush now. Nice fine line and pick up anything in the palette. 
so there are there are some power lines coming down here i don't know whether you can see them in the source photo just ever so faint maybe we've got some coming across the street that might be quite nice so with this brush There's some lines coming across the street. Going down the street as well. Well, I've got this brush. can use this for some finer lines. There's a doorway here. Now, final thing before I finish, I just want to get a few little highlights on some of these figures that are in the middle of the street catching the light. So I'm going to use a bit of white paint, white gouache, white paint, Chinese white, titanium white, doesn't really matter. And now with a clean brush, I'll, I'll use this rigor brush actually, just make sure that is clean i don't want to dirty up my white paint i'm going to take it straight from the tube and it's a damp brush take out just a little bit of that white paint and then some of these figures that are In the, in the middle of the street, they're catching some light. Maybe a few of those. Power lines are catching the light as well. So I'm going to cross the front of the tree. And some supports for the blinds there's a few coming out there my my robed figure tiny bit There we go, that's enough. So I think I'm I think I'm actually done on this. I, if, if I added any more to it, I, I might just destroy the the freshness of it. The more I add, the more I add to it now, the the less it's gonna bring to the overall picture. But but the objective was to try and try and create this this lovely sunlight coming across the uh, the Medina of Fez um, market scene here and figures, the shops, the values, the depth, trying to get the depth as well with that distant tower. And this bright, this bright sky, it's not blue, but you see it's sort of bright, just a bright non-blue type sky. Yeah, so hopefully that is of interest to everyone. Um, thanks very much for those of you listening live. If you're watching recording, um, sorry that um, you, you couldn't join us live. So just 
On Patreon, just watch out for my posting. Should be the next 12, 24 hours or so. I'll give more instructions for how to, if you're on, if you're on the membership level or the tier level, to submit your photograph um, to me of your painting. I'd love to uh, see that. For those of you that don't get a critique, still pop it on the community tab of Patreon so we can see your efforts. Um, but thanks very much, all of you, for your support on Patreon and for those of you watching live as well. Um, I'll catch up with you soon on the next demo. So have a nice rest of your day and speak to you soon. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye.